Building the electronic equivalent of a gas station network isn't exactly the most exciting thing that a company can do. It lacks all of the flash and sizzle that surrounds futuristic electric vehicles with advanced technology and ultra high performance. But the fact remains that even the greatest electric car on the market will always be limited, not by its specifications, but by its convenience or perceived convenience at least. Over the past decade, the majority of public concerns over electric vehicles have largely been stripped away. The price has come down, the range has gone up, but the one sticking point that people still cling to inevitably comes back to charging. They don't understand how it works. They are afraid of being stranded somewhere remote with no ability to recharge their car. People get very stressed about it, and in many cases, they're not wrong to be concerned. So. Is this a problem that can ever be solved? Building the equivalent of a gas station was a project that Elon Musk and Tesla first began to tackle a decade ago. After releasing their first high volume electric car, the Model S, Tesla's second product release was an industrial charging station that customers could use to travel farther than the 200 miles of range that the battery pack was limited to. The Tesla supercharger was launched in 2012 with six stations covering the entire state of California, allowing Model S owners to freely travel from San Francisco to San Diego free from worry about running out of juice. This was core to Elon Musk's vision for the company. If we look back to the original text of his master plan from the year 2006, Elon laid out a three-step process. One, build sports car. Two, use that money to build an affordable car. Three, use that money to build an even more affordable car. Tesla may have started life as a weekend toy for rich people, but the goal was always to become an electric vehicle for the masses. But Elon was smart enough to see the writing on the wall. The masses wouldn't want his electric car, no matter how affordable, if he couldn't make it convenient. And that meant being able to drive their Tesla anywhere they want on the continental United States without having to worry about dead batteries. Thus, the supercharger network was born, and it has continued to expand rapidly up to the current day and into the future. You can now drive a Tesla nearly anywhere in North America, Europe, or Asia without being limited by charging. In the year 2022, Tesla installed 1,200 supercharger stations with about 11,000 individual connectors, reaching a global total of 4,678 stations and 42,419 chargers. That's a growth rate of 35% over 2021. Something that allows Tesla to turn these charging stations out so fast is how they leverage prefabricated construction methods. For North America, all superchargers are manufactured at Tesla's Buffalo, New York Gigafactory. Never heard of that one before? Well, you're not alone. It's the unsung hero of Tesla's manufacturing infrastructure. The building came to them as part of the deal when Tesla acquired Solar City. The plant still produces solar panels, but also took on supercharger duties as well. So all of those iconic white and red charging stations are mass manufactured on an automated production line just like Tesla vehicles. International superchargers are produced at a dedicated factory in China. Last year, it was able to churn out 10,000 charging stalls for Europe and Asia. Now, it's not surprising that the average person gets confused and upset about electric vehicle charging because it is actually pretty convoluted. So let's just break this down a little bit. The first thing that we should talk about is the difference between AC and DC electricity, or alternating current and direct current. The electricity that flows from your local power generation station to the outlets in your wall is alternating current electricity. This energy flows in waves that are created by spinning devices at the power plants called alternators. The wave-like motion of AC electricity allows it to travel over long distances, making it the ideal method for delivering power to your house. Direct current electricity is exactly what it sounds like, linear electric current, a straight line. Converting AC power from the source into its DC equivalent requires a device called an inverter. 
We all use AC-DC inverters on a daily basis, probably several of them, because you can't use AC electricity to charge a battery. It requires the consistent voltage delivery of DC electricity. So that chunk of plastic that goes between your phone charging cable and the wall outlet, that's an inverter, a very low powered one. The big brick on your laptop cable, that's a more powerful inverter. Make sense? Okay, good. Now we can talk about EV charging. Starting with level one, this is the cheapest, easiest, and slowest way to get energy into your EV. Your level one charger is essentially just an extension cord, taking 120 volt AC power from a wall outlet and sending that to an inverter that is built into the vehicle. Every electric car has an internal AC-DC inverter. It's much bigger than the one on your laptop cable, but it is still relatively low power compared to the battery pack in an electric car. Think about the size of the brick on an average laptop cable compared to the size of an average laptop. The inverter is always chunkier than the computer, and then scale that up to the size of a car. The inverter would take up half the vehicle. So because your EV inverter is so small relative to the battery pack, level one charging can only provide you about three to four miles of range increase per hour of charging. To get the most performance possible out of the in-car inverter, you can bump up to level two charging. That's when the car is plugged into a 240 volt AC power source. These are the special outlets that you have to use to power a dryer or an oven. You can have an electrician rig one of these up in your garage or driveway and up your charging speed to around 40 miles of range per hour. These level two chargers are the kind you might also see in big box store parking lots, like around Walmart or Ikea. These charging stations use the J1772 plug type in North America, the GB slash T plug in China, and the type two in Europe. Level three is the charging type that we need for legitimate fast charging. This is because the inverter is now built into the charging station itself. So the electricity flowing into the car is straight DC power. That means it can bypass the internal inverter and go directly to the battery pack of the vehicle. Level three charging has a maximum power output of 350 to 400 kilowatts of energy. These also require a plug type that supports DC connection. So in the United States, that's the combined charging system one or CCS, which is a J1772 plug with added DC connectors. That's why CCS plugs are so gigantic. They just took the original plug type and stuck on extra stuff to it. Same deal in Europe. Type two becomes CCS two. In Asia, they tried to introduce this level three plug type called Chatamo, but it didn't really take off and was mostly replaced by CCS. So you'll come across Chatamo connectors from time to time, but there are very few vehicles that use them. Tesla, on the other hand, skirted around a lot of these issues by creating their own plug type that was designed from day one to support all charging levels. This also resulted in Tesla having one kind of plug and literally every other electric vehicle in the world having some other type of plug. This would become problematic for the other vehicles. But for Tesla drivers, the system is fantastic. The superchargers are directly integrated into the vehicle's operating system. So your car always knows where the nearest supercharger is located. It knows how many stalls are available and what power output they offer. If you tell the car to navigate to a charging station, it will even start to precondition the battery pack on the way there. So once you arrive, the conditions are optimal for the fastest charging possible. The car and the charger talk to each other seamlessly, and the bill for the electricity is automatically added to your Tesla account. Here's a dilemma that Tesla and the other EV manufacturers need to grapple with. Is it better to have faster charging or more frequently available charging? Remember, we said that level three charging can support up to 400 kilowatts of power output. The most recent Tesla supercharger supports up to 250 kilowatts. So, why not just make the inverters more powerful and charge the cars with the full 400 kilowatts? Then it would go faster, right? Well, it's tricky because the charging speed of a vehicle is not just dependent on the amount of power that the charger can dish out. It's actually more dependent on the amount of power that the vehicle battery can take on. 
Lithium ion batteries are very sensitive. You don't want to push them too hard or you risk degrading the internal chemistry and that can lead to anything from reduced lifespan to catastrophic failure. So when you plug in an EV to a level three charger, that full flow of power, whatever it might be, is only going to be sustained for a few minutes. And then the car is going to start telling the charger to slowly close off the tap until there is just a little trickle of electricity flowing to bring it up to full. The higher that initial charging output is, the faster the rate of fall off will be. So there's always going to be a diminishing return with higher output chargers. I think this is the reason that Tesla has been in no rush to chase after a more powerful supercharger. Even though the competition has done exactly that, charging at up to 350 kilowatts. But it's still often faster to recharge a Tesla at a lower peak output than it is to charge a competitor at these higher power levels. The true limiting factor to charging speed is the amount of power the battery pack can accept, not the output of the charging station. So any money spent on bigger and more powerful inverters is largely wasted. And Elon Musk is laser focused on efficiency. So instead of chasing more power, Tesla works towards having more plugs available at more frequent intervals. Because of that diminishing return on charging speed, it's actually faster to do two half charge stops on a road trip as opposed to one full charge stop. But that's only possible with enough infrastructure. The only way that we are going to see a significant decrease in EV charging time from where we are at right now is going to require a major step change in battery technology. That means solid state battery cells or some other kind of innovation that currently only exists on a theoretical level. Elon Musk is a realist and he's known this since day one, which is exactly why Tesla adopted the business model they have with the supercharger network. It's why they continue to set the standard that the rest of the industry is constantly struggling to meet. Let us know about your experience with electric vehicle charging. Do you find it intimidating, frustrating, or nice and easy? Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.